That's why New Brunswick will be aggressively pursuing the federal government to increase our immigration intake to at least 10,000 newcomers a year. Hello friends, welcome back to my channel. My name is Wolo and um, this week has been so rough on me. I am not feeling so well. So if you have sent emails and I have not responded, please, I need to take care of myself. Your response will be delayed and um, I need to be well. I need to take care of myself well before I can respond to emails. And you all know I am churning out information that is free. This information I share, uh, what people are paying for in terms of consultation, paying to agents and all that. And I've received so many emails that is drowning me. Some of them are irrelevant. And some of them, I feel I have responded to those queries on the video. So I beg you, please, before you send an email, check the videos. I must have responded to your queries. So don't just send emails asking me um, how you can come to Canada when I have you know, done tons of videos about different immigration pathways. So before I continue, I think I need to say happy new month. Happy new month to you. And um, if this is the first time you are subscribing to my channel, please be here with me. It's not my usual self because I am not feeling so well. So today's video is basically to share um, the state of province speech by the New Brunswick Premier, uh, where he talked about um, moving the immigration targets to 10,000 people. They had previously gotten approval to nominate 7,500 people um, under the provincial nomination for New Brunswick, but they want to approach the federal government to increase the targets from 7,500 to 10,000 people. So they will be expecting 10,000 immigrants every year. For now, it is 7,500 immigrants every year. And now they want 10,000 immigrants every year, which is an ambitious um, an ambitious growth strategy for the province. And I have talked about New Brunswick going on recruitment events in Europe, in Africa, and I asked you to sign up so that if you get invited, attend those events. They also have information session, which they um, announced and published in Europe and in Africa. If you have the time, sign up and attend those events. I think the events are supposed to start this February. So for those who have received their invitation letters to attend the events, please ensure you attend the event and network as much as you can. It might be an opportunity for you to meet with employers, network with them and, you know, get a job offer that will be bringing you to New Brunswick. And two subscribers, I published it the last time, two subscribers attended the event in Birmingham and they were able to meet with employers. They got a job offer. They are on their way to New Brunswick. In fact, one of them will be in New Brunswick in June. So please, this information I share, don't keep it to yourself. Share it amongst your friends. Um, encourage people to, you know, let them be informed because it is information that will help someone. If uh, the normal express entry pathway is difficult for you, then there are several other pathways, almost 80 pathways to come to Canada. Canada needs 1 million people in the next three years. And you should be telling yourself that you should be among the 1 million people that will immigrate to Canada. So I'll be playing the state of province speech um, done by the premier of New Brunswick. So you can listen to it for yourself and see how it can benefit you. We convened a group of advisors from academia, business, and, tech and technology. People such as Paul Mergerel, our new president of UNB, who brings vast experience from Australia and fresh insights to create a new bold strategy for UNB. And we convened people that could help us and come to a whole new way of thinking. Nicole Leblanc from, from NB also, who leads Sidewalk Labs for Google in Toronto, was part of the process. ONB also hosted the Technology Investment Roundtable in Toronto to signal that we are back in business. Frank McKenna hosted us in his boardroom. We brought in Canada's foremost leaders in the digital era to encourage their ideas and their investments in our province. Nous avons fait appel aux plus grands chefs. We called upon the greatest leaders of Canada in the digital field to encourage their ideas and their investments in our province. We would not even be thinking about New Brunswick 
Pinterest, Instagram, Omers, and more. And now we're on their radar. Here at home, we engage our economists, municipal economic development agencies, industry associations, technology sector groups, and numerous business leaders, including many who are with us tonight. What I am about to share with you represents their thinking, their advice, their expertise. What we heard essentially that we need to embrace, embrace a pro-growth agenda. And we need to do it now. Essentially, what we heard is that we need to adopt a favorable program to growth and starting now. For business. And we absolutely must embrace challenging targets like closing the gap in one generation. Consider for a moment what reaching a population of one million by 2040 would look like for New Brunswick. This kind of population growth would allow us to surpass current projections for real GDP and employment growth. In 2040, real GDP would be nearly 15 billion higher than 2018, and the employment workforce would increase by 100,000. Increase in a private sector investment and improving our productivity performance would grow our economy even further. How are we going to get there? Effective immediately, we are changing the scope of how MB operates to drive economic growth in this province. In order to accomplish our plan, we have five enablers. The first one, immigration and citizens of the future. We recognize people drive economic growth and therefore we need OMB to play a much larger role in workforce attraction. We have a looming skills gap that we will see 120,000 jobs become available in the next 10 years. It's critical we attract more newcomers and retrain more youth. It's essential to attract newcomers and to retain more people. We have set targets and we are bringing, beginning to see the progress. For the third quarter, our labor force participation rates for those 20 to 29 years of age have continued to grow and are now over 82%. Age 30 to 54 has remained relatively steady at nearly 84%. We are growing in Brunswick. We have exceeded targets for the number of new immigrants in the last two quarters. However, we still have more to do and set our targets higher. We have experienced growth in New Brunswick. We surpassed the goals for new immigrants for the last two quarters, but we still have work to do. Set a target of attracting 7,500 newcomers every year for our province by 2024. It is actually the limit of what the federal government will currently allow. We can go even further if we have that opportunity. That's why New Brunswick will be aggressively pursuing the federal government to increase our immigration intake to at least 10,000 newcomers a year. Premier Stephen McNeil in Nova Scotia often says his population is higher than it has ever been and the unemployment rate is lower than it has ever been. He attributes that to immigration. Attracting the right kind of skills and investment will be critical to our success. To attract the right skills and the right investments will be critical for our success. Do just what was done with HCL in Moncton over and over again. HCL is an IT company with 140,000 employees globally and operations in 44 countries. In October, they announced 300 jobs with plans to grow. 80% of those jobs are newcomers who have families who will be joining them. The rest is job creation for our new graduates. This is the kind of exciting investment we need throughout our province. To facilitate more of this kind of growth, I'm pleased to tell you tonight that New Brunswick will open an office in India with the purpose of attracting talent and international investment. It is an important market for us with proven models and partnership. The University of New Brunswick surpassed its application targets this past fall. We have full-time recruiters in the market in partnership with seven universities. There were tremendous opportunities both in agriculture, engineering, forestry and nursing. We have an Indian farmer that was located in Bhaktush. And in the, in the last several years, this investment started because there was an opportunity that was seen in New Brunswick. Three years ago, this family from India looked at our local growing conditions and the global growing calendar and decided we were perfectly situated for their new agricultural venture. And they were told 
It couldn't be done in New Brunswick. They planted a million apple trees in the Bucktooth region. The trees are in the ground and had beautiful apples last year. By 2025, they are expecting to be the largest exporter to Europe and India of apples in Canada. And you know what made me even more excited when I went to visit their orchard last September? They did not ask for one government dollar. We need more of that. They chose New Brunswick because it made sense for them. This family chose New Brunswick because it was the logical choice for them. It's what we need. We need to leverage this and create linkages for more economic investment. More businesses that want to settle here in New Brunswick. OMB has set up a navigator program, and the purpose of the navigator program is to be that single point of contact. The contact where you make one call and the navigator takes you through all the departments in government and make sure that you get the answers to the businesses you're looking at, the regulatory requirements around it, environmental requirements, and that the job gets done in a manner that's important to, to business. I recognize the importance that business has a sense of urgency. Government needs that same sense of urgency because that's how we get things done. Attracting newcomers is one thing, retaining them is another. That's why we'll develop a new program for immigrants to act as an advocate, cut red tape, or assist with this process to gain uh, pro professional credentials. So we will come up with a new program for immigrants, and this program will defend their interests, reduce red tape, and help them Get credentials. Investment. As we embrace a pro-growth agenda, government decisions must consider the impact on the economy and on the needs of business. Business owners don't want to meet with multiple government departments and retell the story every time they want to have an expansion plan. Thank you so much for watching and hope to see you in my next video. I hope I get well soon. And yeah, so see you in my next video. Bye-bye.